you haven't had economics before, elasticity is going to be a new concept for you and one that you're going to need to master. So when the price changes for gasoline, some people say that they, they don't change the amount that they buy. Do you think that's true? Uh, looking at some data we see from 2011 to 2012, September to September, price rose by about 7% and gasoline consumption fell by about 5%. So, uh, as we, you might expect, having spent some time in economics, people do respond to incentives, changing their behavior as prices, as prices change. So, even though consumers did change the amount of gasoline that they were purchasing, it didn't change by very much. So, we need a convenient measure for how quantity changes when price changes. So, we could look at the slope of the demand curve, but that's going to be unit dependent and not very helpful for us. So, instead, uh, we're going to use this concept of elasticity and when you hear elasticity you should think responsiveness or sensitivity it's just the sensitivity of quantity demanded to a change in price this is going to avoid that problem of of units that we were talking about a second ago and this is the formula for price elasticity of demand we're going to have a couple of different kinds of elasticity that we'll see later on so that's why this is called price elasticity and this is just the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. You remember that formula for percentage change from before that I gave you? New minus old over old times 100. We do that for quantity demanded. And then for price, new minus old over old times 100 for price, which is on the bottom. So price, elasticity, elasticity of demand, and slope are related, but they're not the same thing. Take a few minutes and convince yourself of that. Maybe look at the textbook. Uh, OK, the way we talk about elasticity, um, we're often going to be taking the absolute value of elasticity. So the larger values that are more negative, there are just going to be larger once we take the, take the absolute value. So a larger value after we take the absolute value is going to be more elastic. So a higher or larger elasticity. And if we have a large elasticity after we take the absolute value, like I said, that means that quantity demanded is going to be very responsive to a change in price. So a small change in price has a big impact on quantity demanded. So demand is going to be price elastic if the price elasticity is larger in absolute value than one, right? And remember that, that formula, percent change in quantity demanded over percentage change in price. So if that number is bigger than one, a 10% increase in price would have a greater than 10% increase in quantity demanded because that whole, that fraction is bigger than one. So bigger on the top than on the bottom. It is price inelastic if it's smaller than one in absolute value, so same reasoning. And finally, demand is unit price elastic if the price elasticity of demand is exactly equal to one. So percentage change in quantity demanded on top is the same as percentage change in price on bottom. Okay, so here's an example of using that price elasticity formula. If the price falls from $4 to 370, say you cut the price from 4 to 370, and then quantity goes up from 1,000 to 1200 this demand here is going to be elastic between point a and b you can calculate it out new minus old making sure you line up um, this is our old price at four our old quantity at 1000 new price at 370 new quantity at 1200 this would be elastic versus this other demand curve here going from a to c is going to be inelastic so remember Elasticity, you want to think responsive to a change in price. So this change in price results in a large change in quantity demanded for the first demand curve. And then this same change in price results in a smaller change in quantity demanded for the second demand curve. So this one is going to be inelastic. And you can calculate that out and, and see for yourself what the numbers are. The problem with just using the straight up percentage change, though, is that it would uh, the number you would get in calculating the elasticity would be different if you're moving from A to B or B to A on that previous slide. So to get around this, to fix this problem, what we do is just use the midpoint formula. So when we calculate the percentage changes, it's still going to be new minus old, but then instead of just being over old on the bottom for both of those percentage changes, we just do the average. So on the top, we'll have quantity demanded, new minus old. I'll just go to the next slide here. So on the top, we have new minus old for quantity demanded over the average quantity. And then on the bottom, new minus old for price over the average price. So this is calculating elasticity using the midpoint formula. You want to be comfortable with both of those ways of calculating elasticity. 
just the, the regular way using percentage changes and then also using the midpoint formula. So here's an example of a calculation using that midpoint formula. Imagine you have a gas station, you decide to cut prices on gasoline per gallon from 350 to 330, and then you observe what happened to quantity demanded. So it went up from 2000 to 2500. So to start this off, let's go ahead and do the averages. Remember, we're going to use the average for the midpoint formula. So I would recommend you write this out. So you keep things straight on your paper. Just write average quantity, calculate that average, right? Just add them up, divide by two. So there's your average quantity, and then calculate average price. Pretty straightforward. Now do that new minus old, right? So the, remember for elasticity, it's quantity demanded on top. So new minus old, 2,500 minus 2,000 over that average times 100. That gives us a percentage. And then we do the same thing for price, which is on the bottom. New minus old, keep that straight, price fell. So this is the new price, new minus old, which is going to be a negative number here on the top divided by the average price times 100. So we have 22.2% and negative 5.9%. Right? And remember I said we normally think about taking the absolute value. So this number is a lot bigger than 1. So we say that demand in this range is price elastic. So what if the quantity had only gone up to 2100 instead of 2500? The percentage change in price remains the same. That number hasn't changed, right? And the average price, of course, hasn't changed either. So what we need to look at is now this percentage change in quantity demanded. So now we have a different new value for the quantity demanded. So new minus old, that's going to be 100 over the average times 100. Get a new percentage here. And then do this over that same number that we had for the price. This gives us a negative 0.8. And so in absolute value, this is smaller than 1. So this is demand inelastic in this for moving from A to C. Remember, slope and elasticity are not the same, but they are related. If we have two demand curves going through the same point, the one that's steeper, that has the higher slope, is going to be more elastic, more responsive to a change in price. A vertical demand curve means that quantity demanded does not change as price changes. So quantity demanded is unresponsive to a change in price no matter how large. So elasticity is zero. That demand curve is perfectly inelastic. A horizontal demand curve is infinitely responsive to a change in price. So that is infinite elasticity and perfectly elastic. So here are some graphs to summarize what we've just talked about. Elasticity is going to be greater than 1 in absolute value, like we saw earlier with that gasoline example, the first part of it. Inelastic would be less than 1, like we saw in the second part of that gasoline example. And then you want to spend some time looking at, uh, okay, so unelastic, that one's pretty straightforward, right? That, that is equal to 1 for unit elastic, for unit think one unit, right? It's equal to one. Perfectly elastic. Okay, so a small change in price here is going to have an infinite effect on quantity. So right here, um, just think about this curve. If it just sloped down just a tiny little bit, right? A small change would have a huge impact on quantity demanded. So a perfectly horizontal curve, a small change is going to have an infinite impact on quantity demanded. So this is perfectly elastic. The elasticity is infinity. Contrast that with perfectly inelastic. So any change in price here, if we move, if we're at 430, any change in price, we stay at the same quantity demanded of 1,000. That never changes. So that is perfectly inelastic, and that is equal to zero. So let's apply our economic insight to that discussion at the beginning about the price of gasoline. What happens when the price of gasoline goes up? Using what we've just learned, we would say that gasoline demand is inelastic. Quantity demanded does not change much as the price of gasoline changes, but it does change some. So it's not perfectly inelastic. It is responsive somewhat to a change in price. So which one of these graphs would, would illustrate that? So here we have a small change in price or any change in price, but quantity demanded does not change. A vertical demand curve that's perfectly inelastic. That's not what we see with gasoline based on the data, right? We see a change in price that leads to some smaller change in quantity, percentage change in quantity demanded. So this, this is the one that we're going to look for. This curve is, is pretty steep, but it is not vertical. So what determines the price elasticity of demand? We have several things here. You're going to want to be familiar with these just like you were with the shifters of demand and shifters of supply. I'm just going to hit these quickly, but you do need to know them. 
So the availability of closed substitutes, the more substitutes there are, the more elastic demand will be. The longer the time horizon in the long run, you're, you'll expect greater elasticity. Whether the good is a luxury or a necessity, necessities are going to be more inelastic, luxuries more elastic. How narrow the market is, the narrowly, more narrowly you define the market, the more elastic demand will be. So think about like bus transportation versus transportation as a whole. The narrower the market, the more elastic. Uh, the share of a good in consumer's budget, if you don't spend very much of your budget on it, you're probably not going to be very sensitive to price. Elasticity is going to matter a lot in making pricing decisions. So elasticity is going to be very relevant for making pricing decisions for firms. If they cut, if a firm cuts the price, what's going to happen to their total revenue? Remember, total revenue is just the amount of funds received by a seller of a good or service, and we get that. That's the P times Q, price per unit times the number of units sold. That was that rectangle that we did in the earlier slide set. And knowing elasticity is going to be helpful to predict what would happen. So if if your product is relatively price inelastic, a small change in price isn't going to get that, isn't going to add that many new customers. But if the demand for your if your product is elastic, price elastic, then since customers are very sensitive to a change in price, a small change in price would have a large impact on, on the number of units that you actually sell. Sell. So here in this example, imagine we have a, an inelastic relationship. Um, there are going to be two effects when you cut the price on revenue, right? So you, you sell for a smaller price here. So you're going to lose this rectangle as a part of your total revenue if we cut the price. But and here's the increased revenue that you get from selling more units. So in this case, with an inelastic demand curve, this inelastic right here, we lose this in total revenue, but we gain this. But since the gray rectangle is bigger than the green one, overall total, total revenue is going to fall. So this is with an inelastic region here on this demand curve. This demand curve, the second one, is more elastic. So you see that when we cut the price, this gray rectangle here is now smaller than the green rectangle that we gain. This was what we lose in revenue from charging a lower price. We're selling each unit at a lower price, but we're selling more units now. And since this green rectangle is larger, now cutting price actually increases total revenue. An important fact to note is that elasticity is not constant along a linear demand curve. You're going to need to spend some time looking at that, looking at that convincing yourself of it. As you move down the demand curve, demand is going to become more inelastic as you move down. So we're in, well, there's an elastic region, a point of unit elasticity, and then down here at the bottom is a region of inelasticity. And so that also is going to have an effect on total revenue as price falls initially in the elastic region, revenue rises, maxes out at that unit elastic point, and then in the inelastic region, total revenue is going to fall. So elasticity is not constant along a linear demand curve. So you're going to need to know, you at least be able to think through what's going to happen when you change the price. Is demand elastic? If you increase a pri the price, that's going to reduce total revenue, right? So you need to be able to think through all of these examples and be very comfortable with those to, to understand this relationship between price elasticity and revenue. If, pri if demand is elastic and price falls, what happens? If demand is elastic and price rises, what happens? If demand is inelastic and price falls, what happens? all the way through. So if you just want to memorize it in one direction and then think about it the other way, just you know the one way and then you can think about it the other way, that's that's probably the easiest way. So I would maybe just memorize one of these, elastic, cut price, inelastic, cut price, unelastic, cut price, what happens, and then you would be able to think about the opposite case as well. Okay, earlier we introduced briefly substitutes and complements, and we actually have a measure using another kind of elasticity, a cross price elasticity, to show whether whether goods are actually substitutes or complements. So this is going to be just like our price elasticity demand that we looked at before. Notice there's now cross in front of it. It is cross price elasticity. And so you're calculating this the same way except now it's percentage change in quantity demanded of one good and percentage change in price of another good. So still quantity demanded over price but now this is for one good and this is for the other good. Okay, and you need to know these ranges for substitutes and complements. Alright, so let's think about a substitute. If so remember, price is on the bottom. If the price of one good, percentage change in price of one good, rises and the goods are, are substitutes, that means that since the price of the one has risen, the quantity demanded of the other is going to go up, right? Because they're substitutes, you're substituting away from the one that's more expensive towards the cheaper one. So in that case, if price rises on the bottom, 
and the quantity demanded of the other good goes up, we end up with a positive that substitutes. It's going to work the same way for complements, except you're going to get a negative number. So be able to think through that. There are two other elasticity topics you need to look at, income elasticity of demand and elasticity of supply. A lot like demand, look at both of those, you need to know them.